All right, in chapter five, we're going to talk about CMAs and public records and how to CMAs, you know, what do they have to do with public records? Well, guys, CMAs is one of the hardest jobs that you have, but it's one of the most important jobs. Coming up with a listing value or, you know, an offer, that's what a seller's going to ask you, you know, what should we list it for? And the buyer's going to ask you, what should we offer on it? Well, you need to do a CMA to do that. And we've already talked some about how more and more agents are trusting the computer or trusting automation to come up with these values. And that is so dangerous, guys. You really, for selecting comparables and coming up with an actual a number or a price range, you need to be the expert that picks out those comparables and comes up with that number. You know, CMAs are so important and while RPR will give you, you know, 70 pages of bells and whistles, graphs, everything you can think of, when it gets down to the nuts and bolts of the pricing process you need to rely on the real estate expert which is looking at you in the mirror guys cmas are so important and technology is good to help us with those but they shouldn't be the sole way that we come up with that you are still the real estate expert and it's up to you to do these cmas so that they benefit your clients the best way possible so let's look at some examples of cmas and our all-powerful price per square foot formula and also see how public records works their way into these CMAs. Let's get started.